Hey guys, welcome to Matt's Garage. Hopefully this is a quick video, but basically doing a port match on the exhaust and intake side of these small block 302 heads. So I'm gonna be both porting the small block uh, heads, the Edelbrock intake manifold, and then the exhaust side, the Tom's Bronco parts cast iron exhaust manifolds. Uh, and it's basically just making the holes match. Let me bring you in and show you what I've done on the exhaust side. So this is the exhaust manifold. I basically just lay the gasket over the hole and then with a blue Sharpie, mark the parts that are showing past the hole. And then I flip this over, because I was upside down on the manifold, do the same thing on the head. Now I'm not gonna remove all that material, right? But it gives me a template to go, okay, which side of the hole is it centered on? And all I'm gonna do is go in and massage, massage the edges and just open them up a little bit to provide a little more airflow. I'm gonna walk you over to my GT40 heads, but just make a mental note of the size of the standard 302 exhaust port on the head compared to the gasket. Let's go to the GT40. All right, here's a GT40 head. And you can see why these things are sort of so sought after. Major difference in the exhaust uh, in the exhaust size, exhaust port size. And to do this work, all you need is a decent bench to sit at, a die grinder, and a whole set of carbide bits. I got a ton of them. I've got cylindrical ones, I've got conical ones, I've got these, uh, balls, whatever. So you just go in there, less is more. You don't wanna poke into a water jacket or make the walls of anything too thin. Um, and if you ruin your heads, not my fault. If you look in this hole, there's a boss right here. And that's for the uh, smog ports. The smog ports that come out the back of the head. I'm shaving those down because I don't really see a need for them and they get in the way of the flow. These Tom's manifolds took almost no cleanup. I mean, you basically just hit out the burr that's in there from the casting and it's done. These took a little more work. But, I mean, these took maybe three minutes each. This took maybe 10. This is gonna take me another 10. But yeah, it's not that hard. All right, you've seen enough of the exhaust side. I'll bring you back for the intake side. Okay, time to go to the intake side. I got an intake gasket up here and I'm mocking it up and actually there's very little work to be done on the head matching on this one. And if we put the equivalent on here, there's a little more work to do on the manifold side. I held the gasket up to the manifold here and marked it out and it is so minor that I actually am not gonna bother porting the intake side. Both the heads and the manifold are so close to the gasket opening that I, I'm i just like, the, the only place there really is room to cut is on this bottom side. But what I don't wanna do is thin this out to the point where I encourage vacuum leaks. So I'm just gonna let it be. It was really so minor, not worth it. So that's good. So now that gives me time to uh, lap my valves. Before I can lap these valves, I need to clean them. A lot of carbon buildup on them. I got some ghost juice, I got some acetone. Let's use the ghost juice. The process of lapping is really about making a perfect match between the valve seat and the valve because you want them to be like, you know, like a, like a perfect marriage, basically. So first thing I'm gonna do is put a little oil on the valve so it 
you know, because there's been a lot of cleaning and I don't know how much gunk is there. You take some valve lapping compound, you put it, oh, that's not right. So then you put this sort of around the lip here. Yep. Get that sucker, seat it. Get that a little wet, get that in there. Get that stuck and then you... It's hard to it's hard to even see it. I can start seeing some shiners here, but I got a long way to go on this. In order for me to do that, I really need to get this gunk off of here. So I probably need to get my air tool and just clean this face off with a air tool. See, now that's a high level of polish. I wasn't trying to take it to that point, but I need it just to make the valve stick. That should stick a lot better now. It keeps almost getting there, the sound, but then it just gets rough again. That's what I'm looking for. See that uniform grayness all around the edge there? That's a well-lapped valve right there. You wanna get all that lapping compound out of your head and hit it with some brake clean before you actually go to assemble it too. It's definitely getting easier. I've got a rhythm going now. Having the head laid down flat makes it easier. And I'm just able to achieve that, um, that sound much quicker now. Basically when it starts getting smooth and high pitched, that's when you know you're getting close and when it doesn't catch anymore, and it, we, I rotate at 90 and then spin, rotate at 90 then spin, rotate at 90, because you want it to be like perfect all the way around in case a valve spins, and then you know, now these seats are all coming out super, super clean. And the intake tends to be easier than the exhaust because they, they just never got as mucked up as the exhaust. You could spend a month of Sundays getting these exhaust valves as shiny as you wanted. Not sure what the advantage of that is, but just saying. All right, these valves are all lapped. I started with the passenger side. This is the driver's side, that's done. I just wanted to point out a couple things. If you've got a 302 with a um, non-GT40 head, it'll have a smog port in the back and a plug in the front. And you gotta buy these head inserts. This is PF580-4, or two will give you two, you only need two. The thing is, when you pull out the smog pump and then you go to put this in, you'll be like, it's not the right thread. And what, what's happening is it's actually just packed full of carbon. And you know, you gotta almost like take a pick and just start working at the carbon and then get a, a, a like a wire brush in there and work it out. And then I took like a tap and I, it didn't cut any threads. It just cut the carbon out of there. And then I was able to work that in with some thread sealer. One seats deeper than the other, just depending on which side of the head you're on. Um, and what that connected to was this set of uh, exhaust bosses in here that I cut down, but they're all sort of tied to each other so the exhaust would blow out here, and for whatever reason it gets super gummed up, probably because it was a dumb idea, but in any case, just tip. All right, next assembly.